and welcome to SAFC Fan TV. We're back for another episode of Extra Time to preview everything about Middlesbrough on Saturday. Uh, joined with us, Mike. You okay? You had a good day? Yeah, I'm still in recovery. <laughs> yes, I walk. can imagine. So after after the, John Wayne. And you had to walk back as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not likely. Um, I, I slept most of the way back. Let's say. But yeah, um, I'm still recovering, but yeah, going well. Fair enough. And Jacob, how are you, mate? You're all right? Yeah, not too bad. Um, I'm just gearing myself up for the weekend, to be honest. Um, Borough in town, whether you call it a derby or not, um, I'm sure it's going to be um, a big, big occasion at the stadium of like, Good to be back there as well. Are you going to the game, are you? Yeah, all sorted. Tickets sorted the other night. Um, I'm just um, already, already in set. Um, just be nice to embrace probably the last bit of summer sunshine we're going to have at the Soul. So, considerable amount of time. It's a half 12 kickoff, isn't it? What time are you going to have to set off? I'm going up the Friday night before. So ah, right, okay. That <laughs> early, the day before. <laughs> yeah. we well, go. touching on the, the Borough game, I know me and Mike, uh, we obviously met on Sunday at the Stadium of Light where uh, Mike finished his walk. For those who haven't seen it, Mike did a fantastic sort of 80, 90 mile trip for uh, from Burnley all the way to the Stadium of Light for the British Heart Foundation, raising money for, for our dear former member, Jack Shields. Um he did fantastically well, but we, while we were there, we did record our uh, Sunday bunch and we did touch on Middlesbrough. So, Jacob, I'd like to get your thoughts on on how you think we're going to ideally bounce back against Middlesbrough, you know, and how you think we're going to set mm -hmm. up if he's going to make any changes. I think it all depends on the dreaded I word, to be honest. Um, how many... Isidore. Uh... <laughs> Isidore, Isidore. <laughs> Dreaded I word, are you joking? It's a weapon in disguise. <laughs> Dreaded I word, I mean injuries, unfortunately, comrade. Um, it all depends. I mean, obviously, Neil, not Dan Neil, sorry. Um, I imagine he'd keep his place um, at the weekend, considering I think Brown was um, seen in a boot the other night at um, a live event, but apparently mm. it's just precautionary. I think it's touch and go. Whether Dan Ballard... Uh, keeps his place at centre half. I know he was seen leaving Plymouth on crutches last week, but if he is ruled out, then um, over to you, Chris Meppen, to make your debut at centre half alongside Luke 09. But me personally, I don't think Mabry will want to give too much away. Um, I think he will, if they are both fit, I think he will keep it under wraps and we'll, we'll see them um, have some involvement at the weekend. But um, in terms of other injuries, um, Tommy Watson wasn't involved by the time we're, we're recording this. The under 21s were in action tonight. Watson wasn't in the squad at all, which could indicate that Perveda may be ruled out again um, at the weekend. So, yeah, he, he could have a part to play. But going into the game, you know, a defeat might have been, I know, it, at the end of the day, it, it ruled out the best start to a championship season or a season in general the club's had in its history but a defeat this stage of the season could be a good thing to happen to us it will sort of have a small reality check and the players can bounce back in the best possible way and what a game to do it against the borough and yeah yeah, yeah we said the, we said the same thing on sunday mike didn't we that i think we a few of us were on that same thing of <laughs> we'd rather get this moment out of the way Rather yeah. than get carried away and not actually sort of acknowledge any issues that we that we still have, and um, and clearly Labrie, from what he was talking about post Plymouth, already knows what he was, was planning on doing this week, Mike. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure he planned on the amount of injuries he's got. I didn't know about um, Brownie being in the boot. Um, mm. that, that's he had like a knee brace on or something. A knee brace, yeah. I think that's what it was. That might just be old age and dry rot as old footballers have to brace mm. up everything, you know. <laughs> could be, could be, could be all those stairs he had to walk up to the Quinns Bar. I mean, we'll know that from Sunday, of course, that you had to do that as well. <laughs> yeah. But even if Brown is fit, I still think he will stick with the same midfield three that started at Plymouth and Libri will basically want a big reaction. 
I want to see him do something with the formation. I really do. We, we've been glued on this formation. This must be the third season stuck to this one strike of formation. Do mm. something. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you want your two strikers, I'm sure, don't you? Yeah, it, it, even if it's for 45 minutes, just do something. Something needs to change. Well, mm. When the game gets stretched, obviously, we've always tend to stop when, when we have one fit. Um, one striker anyway, but it, we sort of go with a three up top with two wingers and a forward and then three midfielders in behind, one doing a lot of the defensive work, mainly be Neil, one being box to box and one sitting in behind the front line. But it made no difference at Plymouth. Well, no. As soon as one of them got a yellow card, nobody was tackling in that centre and that's been the difference in the games running up to it. Mm. So... If it, if it, I don't know. It's just, it just feels like we've been glued to this formation. Mm. And it's not so much... I mean, the midfield's doing a cracking job, don't get me wrong. The defence up until last week had been doing a really good job. It's just, we want Ross Stewart. And that's what we're trying to play, like we've got him. And not every striker... I feel sorry for Rusin and Meander and even Hamir before he disappeared. I feel sorry for them because they've all been thrown into this one striker role. And like, there you go, do everything yourself, get on with it. And to have a strike partnership could have all of these players could have flourished by now. We don't know. Where do you drop a position though? If you're playing with two strikers, what do you what are you dropping? You dropping the wingers, you're dropping a midfielder. What are you what are you thinking? Central midfield, just two. Two in the centre. And who would you have in the two? Oh, you play five at the back with the wing backs. Potentially, but do you think do do you want to drop Munderland Roberts back? I don't, I, don't, I, I don't know how it would work. I just want to see more than one bloody strike. Because <laughs> I'm well, you're saying first, that first, Sirkin Dan could Neil be out was, on the left. Dan Neil didn't earn, didn't earn his place back in the team, and he didn't earn the spot according to me last week. He he was he was terrible mm. in the last game, uh, and mm. I do like the guy and everything, but maybe it is a case of he can't handle that captain's armband. Maybe it is that added pressure. I don't know. But it just, I don't think we'd miss him if we had just Job and Brown. Mm. What about Rig? Center. I really don't think we'd miss him. Rig as well, yeah. Rig probably is over Brown at the moment with fitness wise. But mm. either way, mm. we've got an abundance of players in that position, I know. If, so you could have plenty of options, but we're, if you we're were forcing to take a team out, because of that. Mm, if you were to take out one of that midfield three, my choice, I know it's so difficult. I would probably go, if particularly for a game like this at the weekend, um, Job for Brown, just to add more experience in the physical battles in the middle of the park. But I think he'll he'll keep it the same, to be honest. Yeah, and I think I don't think Job had Job's a, been good, and he's, he's yeah, Job's been great. I don't think he had a bad game against Plymouth, Job, uh, uh, and. Uh, I just it seemed everybody had a bit of an off day, and when it seemed like it highlighted the fact that when one area of the team wasn't performing well, it affected the entire team, rather than it just being like we've got a you know a dodgy right winger, so we'll, we'll play on the left side. It was a bit like when the midfield weren't all on song, it affected the rest of them. Go on, yeah. Mike. But as soon, but as soon as you, you give, give Job that yellow card, you've just put handcuffs on him. Because his best More asset in these first few games has been his tackling from the centre and his commitment, his chasing stuff down and stuff like that. And as soon as he's on a yellow card, he's like, oh, can't do that. It just shows you know? he doesn't trust, I think, Labrie. And especially for that Borough game, because that was Dan Neal's undoing last week, him mm. being drawn into the physical battle. And I know it was a stupid decision from the ref, but he got sucked into the annoyance and it worked in Borough's favour. Yeah, he, he, he acts amateur sometimes when he it's, it's, it's not the fact that the decision was wrong from the referee, it's the fact that you can watch any game on Sky, any game on you know, any streaming service, any site that it's on, or anything, and you will see a player swearing at the referee and him not mm -hmm. get a card for it. <laughs> it was just, it's a bit like, why then? Because at the same yeah. time, Trey Hume was turning around to the linesman back in the previous game and saying, why the fuck wasn't that given? And he didn't get a card for it. Like It's, it's human reaction with referees. You see it on all tiers of football from mm. Sunday and Saturday league at amateur level all the way up. And you catch a referee on a good day, you catch him on a bad day. You know what I mean? And to be fair, 
I think it was just a lot on top of the referee, and that was like you, 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 you mm. know, you, it's the straw that brought the camels back. So he's going to mm. just send him off at that point. I mean, we don't know as well that that wasn't an isolated incident from Neil, and he hadn't been doing it all game, and the ref had warned him probably. You know, if that was the case, but I mean, we don't really want to focus on the the previous game. It was a bit of an anomaly. Yeah. The referee spoiled the day yep. and spoiled the game at that moment, and, yeah. and obviously Borough took took advantage of it there. Um, I think he would have learned his lesson as well from that. I hope lot. so. And the Burnley good, the makes me think grace, otherwise. <laughs> a good saving grace is for Saturday. I mean, I know this is going out on Thursday, but it was announced today, today being Wednesday, we've been given Simon Hooper for the game now. He's apparently a referee that doesn't dish out many yellows, like basically to allow the flow of the game to continue. So, well, that, but, I mean, so that that's that's what you want for a weekend. that's what you want for a, a derby game. You want the game to to flow and not be sort of petty fouls every five minutes. But just about your point on Dan Neal there, if he's learnt from last year, great. But he did it two day two games ago against Burnley, where he mouthed off at the referee and got a yellow card, and then on a yellow card, he deliberately tripped someone when he'd gone past mm. him with yeah. like five minutes ago, and we could have like potentially lost the lead in that game. We didn't. Yeah, him and Ballard. Him and Ballard made ridiculous tackles. The, the I mean, to say that they theirs wasn't a penalty, I think Emma was on cloud cookie yeah. land on, on Sunday. Sized him down. <laughs> Ballard just jumps through the guy. You know, he doesn't even stand between ball and man. He just <laughs> goes through him in the penalty so, area. I'm just just quickly touching on Ballard, and I know I think we were talking about it in the car ride on the way home um the other day. Really like Dan Ballard. I think he's arguably on his day our best centre back that we have. However, he he is a bit clumsy. So case in point being, even before we talk about the penalty where he sived someone down, he swung at a ball where no one was around him and missed it, which knocked it back into the path of the Plymouth player and put him into that decision that position. I'm going to go back to it, but Newcastle. He swung at his foot just loosely at a cross coming in and fired it into his own net. You know, there, and there's several others that I remember, and there's several other games where he's been absolutely perfect and he cracks Josh Maggio up, you know, and, and puts him out for a season, which would be really helpful if you could do it this year. But he we just. Don't I don't that, by the way. <laughs> I do. We do. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Uh, uh, not Josh Maggio. We'd have been promoted years ago if Maggio had just stayed here. Top, top goal scorer. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't, I'm really I do like Ballard. I think he's one of our best ones. However, we we do have to acknowledge the fact he can be a bit clumsy and a bit rash with his decisions. Sometimes I think it's it's becoming clear. But I mean, is he still number one choice over? Elise over Meppin over uh, obviously so, injuries. Allowed. I mean, I haven't seen Meppin yet, so I don't, I don't really know. Is O'Nine a centre back? I think you have to be now, don't you? And yeah, O'Nine, exactly. yeah, I think O'Nine's and probably been, been our most consistent one. Go on, Jacob. Well, I would say out of all the positions Luke O'Nine's playing, I think his most consistent performances have been playing as a centre half. Mm. I think centre half is where we'd want him to be right now. But I was saying just there, Conrad, unless something happens to Hugh, he might have to be shifted to the right hand side. But he's played also on the left hand side of the of a three yeah. and, and things like that in the mm -hmm. past. So he's 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 across the back uh, no matter what I mean I have, ideally I want Ballard and Elise there my two. Yeah. But, I have liked the way our defence has swapped around a lot. Not not like through starting in different positions, but during the game, they're very yeah. fluid. Going yeah. out to one side, you'll see your nine in the centre, you'll see him off to the side, you'll see him push up, you'll see someone drop in. Clearly, Labrie's done some great work with them because it doesn't even look... They're not tripping over each other. They tried to do that two seasons ago. They just tripped over each other and scored in their own goal six times. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, we—I mean—we've been scoring in our own goal lots of times this season, anyway, as well. Don't forget. I mean, we—we we are uh, the joint top goal scorer They're against us this season. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and one of them was a was a penalty, and the other one was a, a spill from the keeper. Really, so the screamers are ours, I'd think. Well, okay. I mean, we've done our predictions on Sunday, Jacob. So if I had to narrow you down to how you think <laughs> the game's going to go on a score prediction, what what would you go mm. for? 
this one before you do predictions. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Go, go, go. Is it a derby, Jacob? Because Conrad said Conrad said derby multiple times. Is this a derby? No. Can I say why uh, I think so now? Because I, I, I see it from Darlo. I, I no. Fuck no. Uh, so it's only because. <laughs> It, it was actually it was only on Sunday that I, I sort of had a, a change of opinion when um, Philly raised up a point, which is is potentially the reason for our bad record in this Mike game. Mike raised the point, and Mike okay. raised the point. Sorry, you that side or that side? I don't know if I've got my mirrored on. I, I, um, I said this, not Philly. But go on. Fair <laughs> enough. You, I think you both said it. It might have been that he was asking the questions, but fair. Whatever. Take your credit where you can get it. Um, that because we're not treating it as a derby, is that what means that Borough, like this is the derby, this is the most important game of our season, going into it, all guns blazing, we've got to do it for the fans. And we're thinking, it's just another game. It's just another game. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, just three points. And that's why we're not coming in with that same level of intensity. So then... I hadn't thought of it like that. I went, actually, that's that's a very good point. So I've I've made a conscious effort to start referring to it as it's a derby we, and that it's really we can, important. We can also use that to our advantage because mm. I think that could send Boris players up the wrong way in terms of them getting wound up by certain decisions as well. Mm. And I think Labrie, knowing... I think I could just picture Labrie in the dressing room before the game saying... Guys, keep you cool. I know it's you can say whether it's a derby or not, but they're going to want you to be drawn into their game plan. We just got to stick to doing our own thing, and mm. it will pay off. Okay, so I'll, we'll ask in the comments as well. Is is this a derby game? Yeah, just a just a yes or a no. But going back to how do you think the game's going to go? And a score from you, Jacob. I think it's going to be slightly different to the previous five we've seen I think it's going to be a tight affair I think we're going to Michael Carrick's a smart manager I wouldn't say he's on the cusp of being very good but he's a smart manager for this division and he will set his side up well for that game it won't be pretty um, on their behalf but will they care? No, as long as they come out with a good result I know they've had a mixed start to the season. I know, I think some were saying, particularly pundits, that the squad they have should be top six at least. But I think with the mixed run of form they've been on, I think they'll just see this as a not-lose game. But then again, they'll look at the opportunity and think it's a similar squad, more or less the same squad we've got to what we had last season. And we took four points off them. And at the stadium, of right, we put four past them. I know they needed a red card to change the game, but yeah, they'll they'll be up for it as well. But I think, listen, I, I can't go against us at all for a game like this. It, for every prediction, I always back the lads. But I think if we're going to win, it will be uh, a one nil. A one nil. I mean, I'll I'll take it. Don't get me wrong. I'll take anything with three points involved. Uh, just to recap for everyone else as well, Mike, you went for a three nil. To yeah. Sunderland, I'm pretty sure. Uh, uh, Philly yeah. went for what did he go for, everyone? Three one. Yeah, of course he did. <laughs> uh, me and Wayne. Uh, Wayne also went three one. I went for for two one. Sunderland. Did. Emma went for a Desmond two two. Uh, so mm. and Jackie just said get... a draw as well. Yeah, Jackie uh, Jack Shields, mum said one one. I believe a Jack Ross special. Yeah. I think we refer to that as still after that... years of getting them from people I've spoke to. That has been the most popular choice they think it will be a 1-1 at the weekend. Mm. It was the score in the last game, wasn't it, when we were horrific and we nicked it? I mean, I I think a draw was a fair result that game, to be honest. I think I I say horrific because it was Michael Beale and we weren't weren't playing as well as we could do and then out of nowhere we got an equaliser and then looked like the only team who was going to win. Yelled the only that. game for us so far. I'd say. Mm. The saying, one Mike? before that, they just absolutely slapped us, right? So, yeah, that was the red card and the four Same. nil, yeah. and then the the one before that, I think we beat them two nil at our place, uh, Stewart and uh, Ahmad. But they had a red card in that game as well. 
Uh, and then the one before that, I think they won one. Stuart nil. got injured in the warm up. Stuart was injured in the warm up. Yeah, yeah, like literally half an hour before we were meant yeah. to go out. But I, I mean, it, it's it's a pretty sp- even split from for, since eighteen eighty seven. We've won sixty two times, lost fifty two times, against thirty nine draws against Borough. Mm. Jeez, so it's pretty down the middle. Did anyone have any good yeah. memories of of games against Borough in the past? I mean, the first time I ever remember seeing us play Borough, I can't remember what the score was, but I know Brian Dean elbowed Paul Butler in the face and got a got a red card for it. I think so. That was somewhere in the ninety nine. I think, um, but um, I I remember from the terrible season that we don't speak of where Mike's got that shirt on from the, oh, free um, the Arca free kick and the Tommy Miller goal after like, like 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Yeah. yeah. Just in off the knee. I mean, that's, that's what I remember mm. against Borough. Do you have any good memories of Borough games? You two? It was the one, two seasons after my favorite. I think we would let bit of scored after about a minute. We went two, one down. It's when Ledbetter and cats had a scrap on the yeah. pitch. And then I think they're now Desi mates 50 yeah. years later off the pitch. And then God rest his soul, Liam Miller with that volley. Absolutely. Yeah, good. that, um, that one. No. So the first season back in the Premier League with Roy yeah, Keane. Yeah, that was, that was a good one. The season afterwards, when we had uh, Sabrasia in charge, I was at the Sunderland Borough game at Middlesbrough sat in the away end, keeping a very low profile, hoping that we won. Because we were both in the heat of a relegation battle in that season, if you remember. And that was sort of in the running. Uh, I think Newcastle and Borough both ended up going down that season and we we stayed up. It was the 1-1. One, one. I think we, we beat them 2-0 at our place that season, I remember. Chopra got That's two at first, like one of the first few home games of the season and yeah, down and missed a penalty. Missed the penalty um... Yeah, skied it. Mike? Memories? Um, I can't remember the season, um, but it was 3 2. We beat them, but it was an own goal that decided it on like 90 minutes. I remember Keira Richardson was on the pitch. Well, I, um, I know the one. It was what did we score right at the end? Murphy uh, headed it underside the bar, and I think they gave it to Pogatet, yeah. the own goal in the end. Yeah, we, yeah it was pretty much it yeah, kept yeah, yeah. us in the Premier League. So I think they went 1 0 up after four minutes, 1 1 after seven, 2 1 to us before half time. And I just, I just have flashbacks of many of my heroes still being on the pitch at that point like yeah. Richardson no, I think Nosworthy was even still on the pitch at that point of course he was Nosworthy's um, the greatest player we've ever had Danny Higginbotham <laughs> yeah Danny he had a, he, he's scored. He's scored. actually that goal Danny Higginbotham if you actually remember back to it he had a curling header like if you watch from his angle way, yeah. it mm. completely curls into the far corner one of Danny Collins' best assists as well yeah. he said so mm. himself I asked him once what was his best one either Mal Bronk away at Hull or Higginbotham and he said oh. the Higginbotham one. Oh, I love Steve Mal Bronk yeah no. <laughs> uh, Shop- Shopper got the other goal as well so yeah yes was- uh, he had, funny enough he actually got the goal when he didn't have his name on his shirt because he got his <laughs> head bust open in that game yes. so they had yeah. to yeah, shirt shirt. Change. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah that, that's the one I remember because I remember it being like a nail biter up until that. Um, mm. 90th well, it was we needed to to win to basically confirm our stay in the the Premier League. I think um, with like two games yeah. to spare. I can't remember who we played. Mm. I think we had Arsenal on the last game of the season, maybe, but maybe Fulham. No, it wasn't Fulham away. We beaten them. There was two games left to go, and I remember I after that one, we lost them. both. Yeah, and Roy Bolton, Keane was fuming. Yeah, did we lose like two nil to Bolton and then one nil to Arsenal or something like that? And yeah, as in typical Roy Keane fashion, he was fuming that that players basically already on the beach after the Middlesbrough game <laughs> of survival. For, funny enough, in the Middlesbrough squad at the same game was Arker and Catamull. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's been a lot of players that have gone back and forth over the. I mean, if you actually think Stuart Downing got his first. On Proper loan, first team yeah, spell yeah. with us, yeah, uh, on loan for us. Got a good few goals for us as well. Uh, I remember one away at Coventry, but that was the same night that, if you remember, Colin Healy um, got that <laughs> awful injury and was out for a season before then Mick McCarthy yeah. injured him again at training a year later. Um, yeah. Like you say, Arca, Catamol, Ledbetter that have gone back and forth. There's probably more yeah. as well. If we ever bump into Ledbetter one day or get him on here, I do would love to know what that whole K 
catamorphs. That was about that day. Well, it did look at a few good. nasty challenges going in, and yeah. if you think of the two that were going to have a fight, yeah. it was them two for both local what, what, lads. What, what we said language wise, I would love to. <laughs> I don't think you could. You could probably couldn't even YouTube it. couldn't air it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think you could do yeah. that. I, I almost wanted them to do that when when we signed them in League One together. Like just to have like a sit down with the two of them watching their their sort of like battle over the years. I thought that would have been that would have been a good one to see. No, no yeah. bad memories though. I mean, I know most of ours will be the bad memory of last season where mm. you know we were doing all right with Mowbray and then it sort of fell apart. Should we, should yeah, we mention it's not, it's... A, um, Sorry, go a cold midweek FA Cup replay? In oh, I was the, yes, I was at that game. I forgot about oh. that. One of the best. <laughs> Flipping freezing, I'll tell you that. Because I remember, because like you say, midweek game in January, um, and it was absolutely freezing. And they did that thing, do you remember they used to do at the stadium where they forced the away fans to stay back while they emptied the, the sort uh, of the bigger end zone? And the, but they wouldn't even let you down into the concourses. So we just had to sit in the, the stands in January till like 11 o'clock at night. It was absolutely freezing freezing it was but you were warmed up when you saw Sef- Stefan Sessignon smash one in right in front of you uh, mm. and is that the se- who do- is that the season we lost to Everton in the quarterfinals yeah yeah, yeah. there's so many awful memories of nearly yeah. getting to finals isn't there Mike I mean I know I mean went on to commit an absolute mega crime afterwards but Colback's volley was good that night mm. that was That's the first goal that- and put us one up. Smashed it in off the underside of the bar, swear? yes. Can I not, can I not nope. say swear words on balloons. the Jacob's birthday again. His balloons have just gone off. It's like <laughs> when Terry does the thumbs up with fireworks. We, I don't know how it happens. We, we mentioned Colback and the balloons go up. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, it, it, the computer must have been thinking about the time Catamole crocked him in the derby and just sort of. Oh, that was brilliant. <laughs> Balloons going off. Ah, yeah. Love <laughs> Moments like that, I remember more than goals sometimes. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. So, I mean, right. So we've can, can, go on. If we if we've covered the game, can I pitch a question to you? You can indeed. Go. Because of how well this season is going, um, touch wood, obviously. Um, yeah. If we do finish second or first, and we go up. How much of this team can sustain the Premier League? You sure you want to think that far ahead at this stage? Yes, I do. I want to. I want to think. I want to think that far <laughs> ahead before we sell them all in January. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll make. I'll make. I think. I think Patterson's fine. Some of the saves he's he's made. I mean, even that save onto Ballard was an absolute worldy of a save that Ballard then finished off on Saturday. Really? Um, Rig could easily step up and get better. Mm. Bellingham could easily step and get better. Mundell could easily step up, and I don't okay. think he's got. Might, might be easier to say where's the issues. Where would where's the issues? Uh, Striker. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't have one of them now. Uh, I would say we do. We have three. Yeah, it's just... We've got loads. There's there's lots of players who I say what could make the do- step up. Do- say ten seconds into his interview. <clears throat> FTM. He's a striker. Oh, no. I saw someone <laughs> ask him in French if he knew what uh, FTM stood for, and he said he did. Nice. Whereas did he, did he uh, I think Samed... The, the definition? No, he, he didn't say it, no. But I think Samed, Samed <gasps> had no clue. Um, yeah. This is like when that fan went up to Job uh, after the match and went, how are you, Job? Say FTM. And he was like, oh, I can't do that. Sorry. He's like, he's like trying to coax him into saying it. Uh, yeah, but but I mean, it, it's it's more so like what what's going to be the issues because I don't think Luke Nine would survive VAR. <laughs> no, probably Let's not. Let's be and, honest. <laughs> and uh, probably Dan Neal for his bad language because uh, they pull him back on that one, especially when the referees are mic'd up and you can hear the players talking around them. I don't. They'll all just go, "What was he saying?" There's another card. I think Ro- Roberts <laughs> might struggle. I think a division mm. higher. Roberts. You think and... he's past his prime more than anything? Is that what you're thinking? No, I think. In, I think in the Premier League, you just need a bit more rather than trickery and the odds, like not making yeah. someone. As well as I think yeah. the, the best version of Roberts we've seen is when he had Ahmed next to him. Next to him, yeah. 
that's the best version of Roberts we've seen. And you start to think now... Right, because we'll, we'll have Ahmad we back will. when Man United Because he's not even getting a game. He got, what was it, a cameo <laughs> 10 minutes last night. It's just, yeah. Um, um, I think Ahmad took a lot of the, the sort of pressure off of him and a lot of the people away from him as well, which, which freed him up. And we've seen that he is a good player. And yeah. he does do really well for us, but he's struggling to add goal contributions to well, his. Um, considering most play. of you predicted like Sunderland were going to finish eighth, ninth, tenth, and all that lot. Sixth. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah. How can you confidently say it? it's a Premier League team? No. No. <laughs> no. <clears throat> but we we've got elements. That that could easily help us out. However, you don't know. We might do what Ipswich have done, which is they've gone up and they have assembled the most amazing championship team that has ever walked the face of the earth. For the exception of if they get relegated, if they get relegated, they know they're going to get parachute payment money or whatever Premier League yeah. money they're going to get, and they're going to have the best team to come back and have another go at it. Mm. I, I think they could stay up personally. I think so too. I don't see why they couldn't. Yeah. I think they've got more chance than Southampton unless they sack the manager and change the system. Well, I think if they, if McKenna does keep that team up, I mean, I know he was, I think he was linked with Prem jobs midway through last season. I think he could be linked with a, a Premier League club, a mid-table side, I reckon, mm. if he keeps it. It's much up. Everton. That's just... That's... <laughs> Well, Jack would be shouting at you both now. Let's talk about Sunderland. Yeah, <laughs> Jack would actually say it goes our way. We don't want to talk about them, man. And that's just referring <laughs> to anybody. Yeah, it's not a bad shout, though. Right? No. Um, I mean, I think we, we've covered most of what we'd want to say at Borough. So, um, I mean, we don't know much about their. T- I know they bought the striker from Bristol. They've got Isaiah Jones is still doing bits for them. Even though my friend at work always says, if he learned to pass, he'd be absolutely amazing. So that he's he a bit pretty. Do that. Yeah, they've got another striker. Is it Latif Leith? Is he called? I think they signed him in this, or did they? He, I know he either scored an overhead kick against Portsmouth the other week when I saw their highlights, and they've beaten Leeds in the Carabao Cup. Lot, yeah, yeah. So, they, well, their last their last lineup was Diang in net, Ailing, Edmondson, Clark, Borges, or across the back, Balassa, Hackney, Azaz, Jones, Conway, and Latte Lath. Hmm. Now that keeper scored against Sunderland two seasons ago for QPR. Yeah. yeah. He was that one. Uh, nice. I mean, you look, uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, it was a two-two. Um, we would have been nice to keep us close. <laughs> yeah, apart from if it's against um, you. No, Luke, uh, Luke, Luke Ayling and Conway are solid players for that league. I think yeah, Conway scored a, a fair few goals for Bristol. I'd, I'd be willing to. I, I'm going to throw out there that Luke Ayling will get a card in this game because if he's up yeah. against Mundell. He's going to have a bad time, even if Mundell's not completely on his A game. As we've seen, Mundell is a threat regardless of what's going on. I mean, even against Plymouth, when we weren't playing well, if you've watched any of the match or even the extended highlights, everything is coming through him mm. um, in a good way as well. And if we could get Roberts or Pervader, if he could ever stay fit enough to do that on the other side, I think a bit like when Stewart was injured two seasons ago, we wouldn't probably miss a striker as much. I'm just throwing it out there, yeah. but yeah, Isidore yeah. hopefully comes good. I think they're just, I think they're waiting for the right moment to drop him in, and I don't think it's against Borough. I think they'll stick with Myenda against he'll Borough. On. He'll come on, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then I think post Borough game is when we'll see them change it up a bit, unless Myenda has an absolute screamer and you know well, gets you, one or two. Do you think sticking with Myenda is the right choice? Yeah, currently, no. yes. I think he's still. I know he's not scored in the last one. Well, one was taken off him by Brown, but I think his confidence is still sky high at the minute. Well, he got two assists technically against Portsmouth and nearly a goal. Uh, if mm. we think about it, against Sheffield Wednesday he did get two. Against Cardiff he should have had two, but he got none. Mm. Um, so I think he's getting chances. I didn't oh, recall him having let's... many. 
let's count. Let's count Almost the goals gold. Sunderland strikers should have had. Yeah, why not? <laughs> How long have you got? <laughs> yeah. Well, it wouldn't actually be a very long list because we don't play any strikers. <laughs> oh, but M- Mienda's not got the knowledge of a striker. There's two opportunities. We would have been, it would have been a 4 3 game, the last game, if he knew to get to the inside of the defender when running into that box, then crosses. Yeah, he still, he still and makes some like, interesting decisions. Like, so the first half against Portsmouth if you remember he got the wrong he got the right side well the wrong side of a defender but didn't really then know what to do when he was through this is before any of the goals had gone in in the first half he sort of he, he did he caught sort of wrong side of him but then just was like I don't know what to do it's because as he was getting there he was trying to think what did Proctor say what do, what do I have yeah. to do now <laughs> put it in your own net twice that's what Proctor said um, <laughs> no, um, but then again against Sheffield Wednesday when he had less time to think about that first one, he just smashed it in round the keeper. Mm. We done well with the high press that day for him to win the ball as well. Yeah, which I think we will go with on Saturday. I think so too because I think I don't want to sort of jinx it, and but I think the Borough's defence is a bit of an aged one with mm. the likes of Clark and the likes of Ailing. Um, where I think we could we could get them. I know we saw Matt Clark down at Portsmouth quite a lot in League One, and then he, he stepped up. Uh, but I've been seeing him recently. I don't think the fans rate him that well. So um, what's what's your Middlesbrough friends thinking? Because I, I briefly spoke to my boss, and he seemed unusually confident. Yeah, they're they're in a similar sort of state, and I think they've got the our previous records on their side of why they're a bit more confident than we are. Um, well, I mean, their results have not been as good as us to the start of the season. No, but their results aren't that good when they usually come and play us anyway. Yeah. As weird Especially as this sounds, time of the season. As weird as it sounds, I'm always slightly more confident we'll bounce back up going into these sort of games on the back of a defeat rather than a win. I think if, it yeah. was, if we'd won last week, we would have taken our foot off the gas. Yeah, I get, I get you there. It's nice to know that the lads are going to be getting drilled to hell before yeah. a fixture like this because of it's the also is it similar to when we used to sack a manager to let him lose a game before playing Newcastle? <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that your theory? Well, no, because we don't. I mean, have... we did it like five, six times yeah. in a row. <laughs> Mm. We did. We used to sack him. Sack him. Right, right. What Newcastle in two games time? Sack him now. He's got his get his loss out of the way against Chelsea, <laughs> whoever it is, and then he'll beat the he'll beat Newcastle, mm-hmm. and then do it again <laughs> in January. Do it again next year. It worked. It was a dream. He might be doing it. Next Neil didn't get the memo. Yeah. <laughs> no, the breeze. No, Reggie's the man. Thinking if they'd have so waited well. a bit with Mowbray, he could have. Uh, they could have done it then. But no, definitely not. No. Um. They're they're fairly confident from from what I've seen. They've they've highlighted a few issues in their in defence. I, I know that the, uh, one of them absolutely adores Hackney in the middle and says he's he's one of the best ones. But um, I can't say I've watched Middlesbrough that much to know. I knew their strikers uh, because I saw one of them try an overhead kick against Portsmouth that nearly went in and thought, Jesus, who's that lad? So I had to look him up, and that was the double L's name, Latif Laith or whatever he's called. So. Um, Look at them with three strikers, and we haven't got one. Yeah, hack knee mm. in the middle. That's I can just make me think of Catamol again. He used to hack a lot of knees in the middle. Not exactly. <laughs> well, I think if we're going to go down the route of dad jokes, I think we can win this show fairly soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confident also with Sirkin up against Desire Jones in this game compared to... Yeah. Was, yeah. Well, did, did he play last season? No, I don't no. think he did. Um he didn't play a lot of games last season, Circuit. I think that was the issue. No, and then Yelda was the way of thing. No, can't remember. I don't know. Mike, do you want me to do, do you want me to do the Googling? Do one one time for all the whole time's sake. What do you want? Oh yeah, go on, go so, for it. Um so, in, interestingly enough, while you Google, our it's yeah. the first time our win probability has been not as good as it has been. It's at thirty nine percent on these stats of win probability. And what's it for Middlesbrough? 34, so we're still above them, but it's still one of our lowest we've had this year. Interesting. Niall Huggins, that was it, when he was fit, before his horrific injury. 
Niall Huggins was at left back, was he? Uh, he scored a few days before in that Watford. Oh game. yeah, that yeah. that that really good one as well. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, we had, so we had a makeshift right. We had a right back at makeshift left back. Left back Fair yeah. enough. All right. Well, thank you all for tuning in to our Derby Day special. It is a Derby. Let's just test the theory, guys. It is a Derby. So it's really important that we smash them. I think that's the best way. Let's just test it out. Because if it's not a Derby, we can just say afterwards, well, we weren't bothered. We were just doing a take the mic out of you. We need, we need a name then. Because it's not the North East Derby, because obviously that's versus Newcastle. Is it the North East Derby? It's, it <laughs> it's the Weird Tees Derby. It's got a name. Is it weird tees? Is that what it's... Yeah. Is that, yeah. Oh, okay. The A19 Derby. Yeah. A19 Derby. I like that better. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> well, A19 Derby. We'll go with that one then. Mm. So, uh, and I haven't mentioned it at all throughout this recording, but don't forget, you can always uh, subscribe to the channel if you like the content that you see here. Consider becoming a member. It's one ninety nine a month. There is Mike pointing down at Jacob, but there are links below Jacob in the description as well. So if you can pass on that down, there you go. You can pass it down there. Uh, you can pass it even further on. So consider becoming a member for less than, what is it, a Cornetto a week? You could uh, a cornetto a month. A cornetto, whatever m- price. One ninety nine is the price of a cornetto. <laughs> is it? <laughs> oh, World's yeah. gone yeah. mad. <laughs> Insane. Well, it wasn't that during the Shaun of the Dead days, was it? No, no, well, no exactly. <laughs> well, it Better the shop you go to. If you go to the shop where you get the con- <laughs> if you go to the shop where you get a cornetto, where it says multi pack not for resale, then it's usually a bit cheaper. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Well, uh, Mike, did you want to say your goodbyes? Yes, uh, I would like to have another opportunity to just say thank you everybody who supported the charity um, for Jack's family, uh, for the walk I did, um, and for your kind words throughout the walk and afterwards. So I really appreciate you all. Like, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff. Go and check out my channel, uh, Black Cats Nation, uh, and give me a subscribe because I'm really low numbers at the moment. I need it. (laughs) He does. He needs it, guys. Uh, Jacob, do you want to say your goodbyes as well? I was going to say to Mike, you're not having any of our subs. <laughs> you can have the same ones. They're allowed to subscribe to multiple platforms. It's no, fine. I'm joking. I am joking. <laughs> I'm not after your subs. I'm after Mike. Terry's. <laughs> it's not a. It's not a one in, one out. You know, <laughs> option here. Mike went into Nick and I'm joking. Yeah. I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, yeah um, uh, have a good rest of the week and enjoy what Conrad calls a derby day. On Saturday, um, just just for a one time only. <laughs> oh god! Um, best of luck if you're uh, going. Embrace the last of the sunshine. I think we may have at the stadium of light for a while. And most importantly, uh, keep the faith. And also, comrade, I don't know if there'll be a live stream on this platform at the weekend. There That's will exactly be what I was going to go next. To you to present it, my friend. Yes, so uh, on Saturday, it will be myself doing a live stream. Possibly Mike, we don't know yet. Uh, but if not, we I'll be know. there. No, Mike, it's just no, solo. Mike. It's just okay. solo for me. So I, I'm not want... going to get to see the game. I'm going to be stuck in the Black Country Museum in the Midlands with my children. Take your headphones with you, and I'll keep you I up will. to date with it if that's all right. You know, and I'll, you can then at least answer some comments for me as well in, in your moments of going, "Hey, look at that, kids!" and then furiously type a comment away. You give me too much credit as a father. I'd be going, "Put that down! <laughs> Stop it! Get back in!" <laughs> now you've got this all to come, Jacob. So yeah, there will be a live stream. We'll be going live about quarter past twelve on saturday just uh, in time for kickoff uh so yeah we'll see you all then so uh as jacob said keep the faith and we'll we'll see you all on saturday